Um, I request now that everybody uh, before speak is invited, may everybody uh, mute microphone so that we don't hear background noise. Uh, thank you for muting your microphones. You are requested to keep discussion live in the chat box. Introduce yourself so that we can know each other. I'm hoping uh, Father Ben has managed to join. Uh, I was told that uh, he got some issues to join. And I'll, uh, but uh, Ben, are you in? Before we introduce you, we would like to know that you are able. Father Ben? Ben, have you been able to get in? Mm, Father Ben. If you get any challenge, technical challenge, just let us know right in the chat box. There is somebody in charge who is assisting technically. I know there could be some problem of internet from different sides. Um, before we start, would like to know oh, that Father Ben is set. Then we we can introduce him. So thank you again for those ones who are already joining. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, as you join, write in the chat box, introduce yourself, greet the congregations. This is a, an opportunity that we, we have as a family. We always connect Franciscans in Africa and abroad together with our friends, non-Franciscans, and uh, our members of Interfaith. So now, um, thank you. I can see that Ben is with us now. Thank you, thank you. Uh, great, great. So at this juncture, without delaying, uh, let me uh, invite Sister Mary Frances, Mr. Meruangari Sebastian, the Director of Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation Franciscans Africa. As I've said, I can dare to introduce Father Ben. Yeah, he has a long journey uh, in his, his uh, career and his charisma, a lot. So, um, Father Ben, welcome. And uh, But before, let Sister Mary tell us about uh, a bit about Father Ben. Welcome, Sister. Thank you, Steve. Let me... uh -huh. okay. okay, thank you so much, Steve, for inviting me to to introduce Brother Ben. Uh, for me, I know I knew Brother Ben in two thousand and six when he came to the, the AOSK Justice and Peace Commission to seek for and advice as he began the Damieta Peace Initiative here in Kenya and Africa. Brother Benedict is the outreach official officer of Franciscans International, that is FI, he is a captain Franciscan friar, OFM cap. After his ordination, he worked as a curate in a palace where serving as the regional director of the Damietta Peace Initiative, DPI, as I began to say, a grassroots based peace project, promoting the values of justice, peace and interfaith dialogue 
and care for the environment for environment in Eastern Africa. For six years, he served as the director of the International Office of Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation, JPIC, for the Capuchin Franciscans in Rome. In the same period, he was appointed on the International Board of Directors of the Franciscans International. Since the inception of the Global Catholic Climate Movement, GCCM, in 2015, Benedict served on its steering committee until 2020, and before joining the FI, Benedict served as the program manager of the GCCM for Africa for one year. Brother Ben holds a master's degree in international affairs from the New School University in New York, and he is currently a PhD student in organizational development in Manila University. Being a Capuchin Franciscan friar, Benedict follows in the footsteps of St. Francis by promoting and advocating for the values of justice, peace, and the care for creation. You know, when, when you read this thing, you can forget to say the, the the necessary, and I want to say that now. I want to say that uh, Brother Ben has a passion for justice, uh, actually peace building, and he worked very hard in the in Masinani, that is in the in the slum in uh, in the formal center sec sectors, and he was is the man of God who is able. Uh, to, to get on the road with anybody that he needs, provided you promote the same values of St. Francis. So, Brother Ben, I uh, want to invite you to share with the Franciscans uh, what you have for today. And we hope that this is not the beginning. This is just the beginning, but you will have more forum to, to speak. Me in particular, I like Ben because of his jovial mood and I'm sure his interaction, even if we are in the Zoom, will make us attentive. So most welcome, brother. Thank you, thank you, <clears throat> Pache Bene. Uh, greetings to all those in, uh, in Africa and beyond Africa. Very delighted to be with you. Thank you for the humble introduction, Sister Mary Francis and Steve for organizing this, I'm so delighted. I'll uh, wish to share my, uh, my screen, um, just there. I hope now you'll be able to see my screen. Hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. And you can hear the song. Is there a song? No, 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 there is no song. All right, I'll share my sound too. Now there? It's okay, it's there. Wonderful. Uh, just as the song goes on, I'd like to say a few things uh, about my uh, presentation this morning. I put that song in the background because it is calling us to be united brothers and sisters, bind us together, Lord. Uh, and I'll present a little bit about the new encyclical Fratelli Tutti, and then later I will uh, uh, say, I mean, I'll present about the Franciscans International, which tries to put this in practice, the concepts that the Pope speaks about both in uh, Fratelli Tutti, but also in Laudato Si. Uh, I guess already you started with a prayer, right? Yes. Right. So, um, I'd prepare this prayer from uh, the Fratelli Tutti. Uh, just allow me indeed to start with it again, even as we prayed already. The Father and, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Father of our human, human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice, and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world 
a world without hunger, poverty, violence, and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects, and shared dreams through Christ our Lord. Amen. I started with that prayer because it's a specific prayer that Pope Francis uses in Laudato Si. I mean in uh, Fratelli Tutti. Don't worry, I'll be confusing a little bit of Fratelli Tutti and, uh, and, uh, and Laudato Si. Uh, but so Fratelli Tutti is the third encyclic of Pope Francis, uh, which subtitle of On Human Fraternity and Social Friendship. Uh, in the document, Francis states that the COVID-19 pandemic has proven the failure of the world to work together during the crisis. Uh, the encyclical calls for more human fraternity and solidarity and is a plea to reject war. So it gives you a little bit of a basis of this particular document. Uh, the document was signed on 3rd of October. 2020 on the occasion of Pope Francis' visit to the tomb of his namesake, St. Francis of Assisi. It's a great honor for us Franciscans indeed to know that the Pope writes these two great encyclicals, all taken from the Franciscan tradition and background. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, there, is, there is just a basis on it. In the first chapter, he talks about the shadows over the closed world. And these are spreading everywhere, leaving injured people by the roadside, cast out and discarded. The shadows plunge humanity into confusion, loneliness, and dissolution. So you see, there is this kind of uh, confusion in the world. And so uh, the Pope starts his reflection, looking on the situation that we are experiencing in the world today. So opened with the, by a brief introduction and divided into actually eight chapters. It's quite a long encyclical, eight chapters. I think it's even longer for, for the Pope himself. <laughs> the encyclical gathers, as the Pope himself explains, many of his statements on fraternity and social friendship, arranged, however, in a broader context of reflection and complete, uh, complete, complemented by number of letters, documents sent to, uh, to Pope Francis himself by many individuals. So it is something that he compiles from, uh, from other people too. Uh, so the, the, the first chapter, which uh, you know, uh, reflects on the, some of the things that I've highlighted there, is dark clouds over a closed world. And the document reflects on the many distortions of contemporary era, as I said, the manipulation and deformation of concepts such as democracy, freedom, justice, the loss of meaning of the social uh, community and history, selfishness, indifference toward the common good, the prevalence of market logic based on profits and culture of waste, which again, if you have read Laudato Si, you'll find that the culture of waste is there. And um, unemployment, racism, think of the uh, you know, Black, Black Lives Matter, uh, issues of poverty, this disparity of rights and its, uh, you know, uh, its consequences on a modern kind of slavery, trafficking, women issues. So it, it deals on all these issues and, uh, and brings that together. It deals with global problems that call for global actions, emphasizes the pop, also sounding the alarm against a culture of wars that favors the prolification of organized crime. You know, so many, many things that uh, our world is currently facing are, are, are outlined in, in Fratelli Tutti. So after the lamenting that is the first chapter, the Pope Francis offers an extended reflection on Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan as a ray of light in the midst of what we are experiencing today. 
this we, you find in uh, Pratelli Tutti number 56. And the Holy Father sees in the parable a reminder that the, the natural love we experience for family members should be consciously extended to those who are strangers to us. And the Pope emphasizes that in an unhealthy society, that turns its back on suffering and that is illiterate in caring for the frail and the vulnerable. So when we come upon an injured stranger on the road, we can assume one of two attitudes. We can pass by or we can stop to help, like just uh, the story of the Good Samaritan. Uh, the type of a person we are and the type of political, social, religious groups we belong to will be defined by whether we include or exclude the injured person. So the, the, the way we deal with the society currently, the Pope explains, matters a lot is either we become like those who saw this injured man in the story of the good, I mean, the good Samaritan and we pass by the Levite, the others, or we stop like the good Samaritan and care for that particular person. I think uh, in the Franciscan tradition and charism, uh, we, we, have, uh, we, we have the culture of really caring for, uh, for the poor in the society. So then each day, we have to decide whether to be good Samaritans or in different bystanders. Will we bend down to touch and heal the wounds of others? As a, as a question that we need to reflect, to reflect on. And then he moves on and talks about rights have no borders. A fraternal society therefore will be one that promotes edu educating in dialogue in order to defeat the virus of radical individualism and to allow everyone to give the best of themselves, beginning with the protection of the family, which is a very great uh, aspect of the, the society and respect for its primary and vital mission of education. The Pope speaks about this in Fratelli Tutti number one, 114. So God is universal. God is universal love. And as long as we are part of that love and share in it, we are called to universal fraternity, which is openness to all. There are no others, no them. There is only us. So the, the issue of saying them and, and us, we, we want God and in God an open world a world without walls, without borders, without people rejected, without strangers. And there are two tools in particular to achieve this type of society. And he mentions that benevolence or truly wanting good for the others is Fratello, Fratelli Tutti number 112. And solidarity, which cares for fragility and is expressed in service to people and not to ideologies fighting against poverty and inequality. So those two, two issues, the benevolence and the solidarity are very vital and he mentions all that. He says an authentic human fraternity must be based on a recognition of the inherent dignity of all persons, especially those who are vulnerable, poor or suffering. And in economic terms, Human dignity also entails the right to sufficient opportunities for his or her in, or her integral development. So again, you see a drawing a lot from St. Francis. Uh, he, he brings in the idea of caring for those who are vulnerable in our society uh, today. Then he, he goes further even to bring in very practical examples of, you know, migrants, global governance for long-term planning in terms of the issue that we are now faced with the, the crisis of migration in some places. They say that this one, we must have an open heart in chapter four. We need to experience social friendship, seek what is morally good and practice a social ethic because we know we are part of a universal fraternity. And, and Pope Francis writes that since migration is an international concern, 
an international response is needed. So it, it, is, it is a global problem which must be dealt with, with, with the globally focused solutions. And then rather than seeing my migration as cause for fear or turmoil, we ought to welcome the fruit exchange that migrants bring to a community and the opportunities for caring for strangers. All individuals, whether their origins uh, know that they are part of the, they must know that they are part of the greater human family without which they will not be able to understand themselves fully. And we must embrace them. Uh, he encourages each one of us. Then they move on to deal with particular issue of, uh, you know, politics. And he talks about valuable forms of charity. Uh, so the theme of this, the theme of the, the fifth chapter, a better kind of politics. Which kind of politics should we uh, practice? It should be the one that represents one of the most valuable forms of charity because it is placed at the service of the common good. So politics must be placed at the service of common good uh, to create an opportunity uh, or to create an open world with an open heart, it is necessary to engage in politics and a better kind of politics. So, well, you know, you've heard those people saying uh, politics is dirty and all that, but the Pope here is encouraging that we need to engage in politics, that that politics, which is good, politics for the common and universal good, politics that is popular because it is for and with the people. It is politics with social charity that seeks human dignity. The politics of men and women who practice political love by integrating the economy with social and cultural fabric into a consistent and life-giving human project. Knowing how uh, to dialogue is the open way to open the world and build social friendship. Yeah, building those social friendships you know, between communities and peoples. And Pope Francis discusses two movements that hinder our ability to see the world as open and having a place for all people. He mentions populism and uh, uh, liberalism, uh, which, you know, populism, as we know, it, a, it, it distorts the notion of our people in a, in a close and exclusive way, exclusive way, uh, and liberalism, specifically neoliberalism exalts the marketplace as the solution to all problems to the benefit not only of those in power, but also those who command power. And even here, he cites Pope John Paul II or St. Paul, St. John Paul II. Uh, and he imagines here that uh, the kind of politics that we need to have are those that promote love, and he says clearly that political love is practiced in sacrifice for those in greatest need, but in accord with subsidiary so that it does not become a soulless pragmatism. And this can be quoted from uh, Pratelli Tutti 187. And then he moves on as he comes to the end of his presentation, he talks about dialogue and friendship in society. And this is actually from uh, the fifth chapter. Uh, he says that he, he turns to dialogue and it's essential role in creating a new culture of fraternity. He says dialogue is middle path between selfish indifference and violent protest. Society is built on authentic dialogue which involves respecting the other's viewpoint, but not in a relativistic uh, kind of fashion. Rather, it must respect the truth of our human dignity and submit to the truth. And then he speaks a little bit about the art of peace and the importance of forgiveness, saying that peace is an art that involves and regards everyone and in which each one must do his or her part. Peace building is an open-ended endeavor, a never-ending task. And the Pope continues, and thus it is important to place the human person, his or her dignity and the common good at the center of all activity. Uh, you know, he also speaks about forgiveness and saying forgiveness is linked to peace, 
we must love everyone without exception. And he says that that kind of forgiveness does not mean impunity, but rather justice and remembrance because to forgive does not mean to forget, but to renounce the destructive power of evil and the desire for revenge. So in his final chapter, the Pope asserts the essential role that the different religion, religions of the world should play in fostering universal fraternity. Religions remind humanity of the existence of transcendent truth, which is the source of human dignity. Moreover, religious formation fortifies human conscience against the individualism and materialism that underlies the divisions and the polarization in our, in our world today. Pope Francis calls for greater collaboration among religions for the common good and the promotion of the poor. And uh, Pope Francis specifically quotes directly from uh, the, the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, which he signed in February, 2019 with the grand imam of Azar in Abu Dhabi, committing again in the name of God to path of peace and dialogue towards greater human fraternity. And you remember last year we are celebrating the 800th anniversary of, uh, of the meeting or the meeting between the Sultan St. Francis and the Sultan. So you see, it brings in even people of other faiths and especially uh, Muslims, and so it's a document that is it's all encompassing, a very rich document indeed. And at the end, the Pope uh, he concludes by remembering Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi, and above all, Blessed Charles de Foucault, a model for every one of which what it means to identify with the least in order to become the universal brother. That is, he quotes that in the, at the end of the Fratelli Tutti, number 286287. Hope we are together. Can you still hear me? Steve? Steve, are you there? Hello? Yes, we hear you. Okay. We hear you, Father. We hear you. All right. So now, uh, after presenting a little bit of the, um, uh, the Fratelli Tutti, some of the concepts that the Franciscans International have put in place, doing advocacy at the United Nations, uh, and uh, taking the mission of, you know, uh, being like a voice of the voiceless, uh, both at the local, the national level and the international level, those concepts of the pop are, uh, you know, put in place. And I would like to say that Franciscans International is an international non-government organization with general consultative status at the United Nations. Uh, it works for the promotion protection and respect of human rights, social rights, and environmental justice. The vision and mission of FI at the UN is to be the Franciscan voice at the United Nations, promoting the poor, the marginalized, and our wounded world, as we saw in Fratelli Tutti chapter one, the uh, social evils that then we need to advocate against. And so the main partners in the Franciscans International are the Franciscans uh, that are represented by the Roman Six, which is the Inter-Franciscan Justice and Peace uh, based in Rome, and also grassroots level superiors of all the Franciscans around the world. Uh, the main ben beneficiaries indeed are people that are marginalized and victims of injustice, the ones that you have mentioned indeed in Fratelli Tutti. And the main program is human rights advocacy work at the United Nations, both in New York and in Geneva, as you can see there, New York and Geneva. And the main methodology that they use or we use uh, are human rights based approach to justice, environment, environment, development, and peace. And you can see in the picture over there, uh, these include all the Franciscan family, including the Fres Minor OFM, 
Friars Minor Capuchins, Friars Minor Conventures, the Third Order Regular, the OFS, the IFT, TOR Sisters. But there is another group that is maybe forgotten here are the Anglican Franciscans. Anglican Franciscans are also included in the Franciscans International. So you see it is all encompassing. And you can see this, uh, they are represented on the board of directors. As you can see in the picture over there, uh, these are all the representatives from all the branches of the Franciscans, including this uh, priest here uh, from uh, the Anglican, the Anglican, uh, the Anglican uh, Church, uh, who is a Franciscan himself. Our current executive director is a friar minor called Marcus Heinz, based in uh, in Geneva, and the uh, the president of the board is. Uh, uh, Joe Rosansky, who is also a friar minor. So the vision and mission are clearly defined. It's a global community built on Franciscan values in which the dignity of every person is respected, resources are shared equitably, the environment is sustained, and nations and peoples live in peace. And our mission actually include being a voice at the United Nations, protecting the vulnerable, the forgotten, and our wounded earth through advocacy work. And since 1989, FI or Franciscans International uses advocacy as a tool to combat and curb human rights abuses. The Franciscans International understands advocacy as a means to amplify the voices of the marginalized. And when we talk about uh, when we talk about advocacy here, is uh, indeed a process that aims to influence political decisions. It is the act of pleading or arguing in favor of groups of people, rights, causes, ideas, or policies. This is what the Pope speaks about in Fratelli Tutti that we need to be engaged in politics in a positive way that can bring a transformation in the society. Our advocacy is based on three dynamic interrelated elements. We rely on the expertise and first hand information gathered from a large network of partners working with vulnerable communities worldwide to ensure that the voices of the most marginalized are heard at the international level. And so what we do, we bring some of the Franciscans working in different uh, projects, both in, uh, in, our, in the, uh, the UN, uh, uh, UN uh, human rights, um, headquarters in Geneva or uh, the Security Council uh, forums in New York, where then we use the mechanisms put in place to do advocacy on particular issues. Uh, we also produce materials. We, uh, together with the Franciscan family, we were able to give a handbook on extreme poverty and human rights. Um, looked on the issue of, for example, here in Africa, we have the issue of uh, Benin where uh, the Franciscans International helped to um, to remove the what we call the uh, the child witch, where children are killed because they are suspected to be witches, and it was a kind of a widespread thing in Benin. Uh, so through the Franciscans International advocacy was started at the at the UN in in Geneva, in which the uh, the Benin government was uh, was actually driven or forced to put in policies to protect children uh, from this cult of uh, child witch. <clears throat> so we advocate to bring about structural change to address sy sy systemic injustices, influence policymakers to bring about concrete change, denounce human rights abuses and raise awareness about them, mobilize partners to participate in decisions that affect them. And then from its offices, both in Geneva and in New York, uh, the Franciscans International works with grassroots movements, national and international uh, movements, uh, civil society organizations to advocate for structural change, as I've said. So it's respond to concerns of Franciscans, identify problems, find viable solutions, design an advocacy strategy and act at international level, and then promote real change at national level. And uh, so there are thematic issues 
that are very important and they are, uh, we divide our work between country specific advocacy and international policy and global concern. We promote greater social and environmental justice by pushing key issues to the UN agenda. And so FI seeks to promote greater social and environmental justice by increasing the respect and protection of human rights in global policies negotiated in New York and Geneva related to sustainable development, business and human rights and extreme uh, poverty as you have seen there. And why do we need a greater social and environmental justice? It's because of the current development model has increased inequalities in the distribution of economic and natural resources uh, that then are affecting everyone as the Pope mentions in, in Fratelli Tutti. So we divide, as I said, our work in specific advocacy and international policy and global concern, uh, but we promote greater social and environmental justice by pushing key issues uh, um, uh, to the UN agenda. And we have areas divided in Africa where we deal with economic and social rights, women and children rights. The Americas is issues to do indigenous people's rights, responsibility of, um, uh, of home countries for corporate operations. And Asia Pacific, we deal with the negative impacts of climate change rights of migrants, asylum seekers, and refugees. So what do we do? You can see some of those things over there, capacity building, campaigning and awareness building, building partnership and networks, lobbying, you know, negotiations, briefing witnesses from, I mean, bringing witnesses from the grassroots to the UN, uh, brought many Franciscans, uh, to the UN to bear witness of what is happening. We do conferences and events, research and publications, and uh, direct interventions at the United Nations. We have achieved a lot of things, um, uh, and you can see some of them there. FI recommendations became official UN recommendations because of the, the work of some of the Franciscans, the grassroots. FI led campaigns, you know, uh, to influence policy. Uh, local network are established or strengthened. So uh, working with your different groups like the Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation Franciscan Africa is a fruit of the Franciscan International. We work with local partners to train and submit their reports at the United Nations. Um, also, we engage the grassroots trying to lobby at the UN to bring a particular issue, as I've mentioned, an example of Benin and many other things that uh, we need time to go deep into. And just before we come to the end, uh, we, uh, we, are, we collaborate in very complex way. As you know, Franciscans, we have many and uh, we have many projects. Uh, so that map helps to, for, for us to understand how we collaborate. We have the Franciscans International and the Franciscan Action Network, uh, the Franciscans International based at the UN, but also Franciscan Ac Action Network based at the US, um, based in the US uh, tries to advocate their uh, but also we have uh, justice and peace offices around the world that help with coordinating and training of Franciscans on the social and uh, social issues. We have grassroots groups like the, uh, the, the uh, Franciscan parish groups, the Damieta Peace Initiative, local groups, all this work together to promote the mission uh, uh, that the Pope speaks about in, uh, in Fratelli Tutti and even in Laudato Si. So again, if you have any questions, you want to engage us more in uh, you know, helping to promote this mission of the Pope, but also the mission of the Franciscans, both at the UN and the national level, we are ready to support you and uh, to work with you. And I would like to end here by saying thank you, God bless you, and thank you for listening uh, to me. You can easily get uh, the website of the Franciscans International there where you can get more information. Thank you so much, Lauda to see. Thank you so much, Father Ben, for this great presentation. 
full of research and the knowledge and experience that you have on the field already. You, you've done really a great work and the, I think now our people have gotten uh, a bit of connection like this new Frater Tutti that people are trying to understand. Yeah, the connection with Lauda to see uh, how it all goes to justice and peace. Also, I think in, in somehow also it comes to com to com uh, like like complementarity to the Lauda to see. Mm, it is also interesting the way it is all inspired from Francis, uh, Saint Francis of Assisi. So for real, as you've said, Franciscans should be proud of this. Uh, also. Um, yeah, also inspired by our leaders in the different corners of the world, like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, this Montutu. I think uh, I will also request that maybe you will also elaborate a bit more about Ubuntu, how like the Franciscan, you know, the African concepts, how it comes, because like the world, uh, uh, the first thing I, I, I learned about this, uh, I saw like the world shouting about concept of Ubuntu being highlighted in this fraternity. So it is another pride for Africans. Uh, yeah, um, it is coming also maybe uh, as a solution like this global solution that we are looking to heal this uh, COVID-19 and the just recovery that we need. That's it's needed also to tackle all this aspect of uh, social injustice. Thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, I would request uh, Sister Mary Wangare, do you have any uh, any remark or comments? And also we will invite all members now present, uh, the audience, when you have a question or uh, any comments. First of all, uh, go in the chat box, write, uh, <coughs> To Ben, appreciate, appreciate. He has done a great presentation. We've learned a lot. Put your appreciation in the chat box. If you are not able, some they don't like to speak, but put your question in the chat box. Others, you unmute your microphone and uh, uh, you have some minutes to speak, tell us, or make any question you have. Sister Mary, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Brother Ben for uh, elaborating to us more so the new encyclical, Frateri Tutti. And uh, also the connection between the, the mission, the work of the Franciscans International, and also the connecting it with the Randatosi and the Frateri Tutti. Thank you so much for that elaborative talk. Now, wow, I... I, I was moved when I heard that um, Pope Francis in Frateri Tutti is calling us for universal love. Universal love, we are called to universal fraternity. Now it is not as Franciscans, it's as all of us, the whole humanity actually. And this makes me more proud to be a Franciscan. Thank you for elaborating that. That about the politics, and I'm sure some of us listening, yeah, maybe there is one who has the same uh, feeling like me, that you agree with me that the experience that we have had, especially my own experience is that when you speak about politics, you are discussing the issues that are connected to the human being and reasons why people are poor. Some think that we are going so far, we are not supposed to speak about politics. But here, Pope Francis is inviting us through this uh, document and is telling us and challenging us that politics is not evil. Actually, the politics become evil if we are doing it for our own gain. Thank you for bringing it to our awareness that Politics are for common good. And they are, they are politics that are practical love. And I want to give you an example of the work of JPIC Franciscans Africa with the Franciscans International in Mukuru Slam. And this is where actually the Franciscan International 
pre-tested the, they collected the materials for the handbook, making rights work for people living on extreme, of, extreme poverty and pre-tested it later in the same slum. And I actually, I can attest to this because I, I was the read to this. And I, I imagine, I remember that I was called by a donor who told me I should keep off the politics. I should keep off the politics of Mukuru because they are bloody. Now, I, did I stop? No, I did not stop. Am I alive? Yes, I'm still alive. Uh, as we speak right now, the work that FI, that is Franciscans International did through our office as you have heard that we, we work together with them, is bearing fruits. At the moment, I know people of Mokuru have called on people, Franciscans, to go to them and uh, visit them as a day of our charity. But at the moment, I know that the Mokuru is having a SPA, that is special planning area, to make that slum replant again through the, the so that they can get the proper infrastructure like water and sanitation to to differentiate the clean water and the sewages. It has begun and the roads have been made, though a positive thing has also a negative impact. I know that there are so many of our people in Mukuru that are suffering right now because of their houses being demolished. Uh, their plots been uh, their, their, their plots whatever they have built been reduced but however i can say this is the work of fi that there is something that is happening in mukuru and this is the work of those who have no fear i'm calling upon all the franciscans here to keep up send of our fear agitate for advocacy for the poor and evangelized marginalized work for them and not just to listen to the to say that politics is, is actually evil. Pope has really confirmed, and I'm very grateful for this fraternity. I'm hoping that as Franciscan, we can really move on into interpreting this book in, until we understand it more further. And so in the coming weeks after this Saturday, we will start asking different Franciscans to come and elaborate to us Fratelli Tutti and Cyclico from the Pope. And to land on, I want to say that uh, collaboration among other religion is very important. Collaboration with the Muslims, that is the work we've been doing for, uh, for some years now. Uh, partnering with them, partnering with other faiths is not a choice but it's a call for the Franciscan family. It's a call for each and everyone who is a Franciscan. Thank you once again, Ben. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. Uh, I know we have many, many uh, who would like to share some remarks or comment or ask a question. Please welcome, open your... Uh, I'll mute your microphone and uh, there is something. Yes, I, could, I can see Father Kamau, the chairperson of Franciscan Family Association of Kenya, will come. would like. And uh, uh, also yes. Sister Ratan Chana from. Sick community, you are right. You are right. Welcome. Yeah, United Religion Initiative. Uh, can I say something, please? Yes, please. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Father Ben. Uh, is it possible to get this presentation on the link that I can hear it again? It's so inspiring. Yes, indeed. We would love to share. We sent to the uh, to the Office of Justice and Peace to Steve and Mary Francis, and uh, you can easily get it there. Yeah, You're welcome. It is also on YouTube. There is a link we've already shared in the chat box. Yeah. yeah Thank okay. you. 
Thank you so much. And I think this is very timely, which uh, this presentation has made and Franciscans are doing this wonderful job. This is my deep appreciation. And uh, this was wonderful. I think we should have this type of uh, uh, events more often. Very, very timely, very uh, appealing at this time, you know, for having uh, human rights and uh, um, bringing communities together. And uh, we are learning what Franciscans think. Uh, we think we are the only ones, you know how it is. Um, we think we are doing the good job. You know, communities, different communities think. But when we share with others, we come to know that um, other communities are doing a so good job. So thank you so much for sharing this. this it was a learning process also for me. You're welcome. Thank you so much, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I say something? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Father. Hello, uh, hello, everybody. I'm I'm happy to be with you. I think uh, this document, uh, Fratari Tutti, is opening up eyes for us Franciscans. And uh, as Franciscan uh, in Kenya, uh, we are going to make the. Uh, I hope uh, that we are able to make the first comment of this document. So I'm calling upon anybody, uh, any Franciscan or even those who are not Franciscan and would like to, let, to write an article on this document that we are going to put together the comments on this document, then we can be able to share with the whole world. Mm. The Franciscan Family Association is ready to cater for the publication of such document. So um, through uh, Steve, you can send all your comments and then we'll be able to put them together and then we can have the first reaction from the Franciscan on this document. Welcome so much and everybody who is willing to do that, I think we will do, we'll be able to do that service to the world as Franciscans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna share again my email in the chat box so that you can receive those comments. Uh, Sister Anne Williams. Uh, yes. Hello, I'm Mary Ann, FMM. And I, I thank you very much, Brother Ben. And I want to ask you, what about our UN branch here, the Habitat branch in Nairobi? Is there something that uh, we as Franciscans should be doing in relation to the UN here? Do we not need a voice there or some representation to participate in the efforts of the UN here in Nairobi? Thank you, sister, for that question. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, indeed. Uh, the UNEP offices, the UN offices, one of the uh, big UN uh, branch in the world uh, that is based outside, uh, you know, Europe and uh, and in, in the north, and it's a major UN agency that uh, we need to, to work with. And indeed, we are working with them already uh, on environmental issues. We've been engaging with them. Uh, we know the Justice and Peace Franciscan Africa is very much engaged with them. And the Global Catholic Climate Movement, we are engaged with them. They promote their, uh, their issues. On the side of the Franciscans International, our approach is more on uh, human rights, uh, where we do a lot of advocacy. And the, the only way you can influence policy on the issue of human rights is done in Geneva or in New York. Although also on our mission as the Franciscans International, we have environmental issues which are very important. One of the branches of the UN is also based in Geneva where we do advocacy work. So we are already working with them and uh, both at the grassroots in their program, they have started a program called Faith and Earth Network uh, which uh, I know uh, that they are very close to all the, the, uh, the religions, uh, not only Franciscans, but all. And they'll be welcoming you for meetings, uh, always to, to go and give your voice in that. So advocacy is happening already with the, with the UNEP. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Father. Thanks. I also want to add to the answer of, of Brother Ben to Sister Mary Ann. Uh, Mother Earth Network, Mother Earth Network is a registered is registered under UNEP. And so most of the activities, we also carry them when it comes to en environment through Mother Earth. And because of Lauda to see, which is registered under Sinesa in, in UNEP, we also take a lot of, uh, we also join them in a lot of the activities. So we are still working as Ben has said, and we will continue to looking and seeking for avenues which can help us to become more close to you. And uh, we have partners like Yad, who is directly actually working with the JPMC, Franciscans Africa, at the level. So thank you so much for your concern. Thank you so much for your comments and the remarks. Anybody else? I uh, would like to hear also uh, from the participants from different countries, what are the ideas, not only in Kenya. I saw Brother Michael from Nigeria. Are you with us? Can you greet us and uh, tell us the situation in Nigeria? Hello. Oh, no, no. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yes. Hello. Okay. Thank you for the pain. But uh, for this topic, I say thank you for all. But uh, I want to, Brother Steve and Sister Mary. We want to make another people like you, yours, because we have two peoples we have every time introducing and every time as a responsible in this meeting. But I want another peoples from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and everywhere. So, Brother Steve and Sister Mary, I want you to make another people's to be. Yes. Uh, let me <laughs> yes. Let me uh, inform inform uh, the uh, participants. Arnold is a uh, Francisca uh, is a Yufra from Tanzania. Uh, Dar es Salaam, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank no, you. Uh, the sister. Tameli, natakiwa tuatengeneze watu wengine ambao watakao weza kuwa kama nini. Kwa sababu, kila siku tunaitaji vijana wapya ambao watakao kuwa na nguvyu, waza kuweza kuongea kama nini. Tunaitaji tunaitaji kwa lays another peoples. Kwa hiyo naomba weze kuweka nguvu nyingine, nyinguvu kazi. Great. Ya. Na hapo hapo, tunaweza mkatufanya kuwa maimvoi sure. of Franciscan. Great. Tunaweza tukawa no? maimvoi of Franciscan can making peoples who can go anywhere to, uh, to, 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 to unaweza ukaenda katika mbali mbali ujumbe ujumbe kwa kuwa tunahitaji kuweza kuweka nchi zote katika amani kwa hiyo tunaomba brother Steve and sister Mary naomba mtusaidie vijana na hata hivyo mnaweza mkachagua vijana mbali mbali kwa sababu tupo naona kuna vijana wengi kwenye kwenye meeting 
ambao wapo mnaweza mkachagua na wengine mnaweza mkachagua huko Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Asante. Asante sana brother Arnold. Uh, in a few uh, accounts uh, inform people like uh, even though he, he is speaking from Tanzania, you know, uh, Tanzania Swahili is is the most uh, powerful the beautiful language spoken from there and uh, Arnold is also, uh, I think, connecting to the fraternity, like justice and peace. There is a part of empower, empowering young people, or uh, has is the way is insisting, like empowering the young people also to be able to carry this mission uh, to to promote peace and justice in the different countries where we are. Yeah, I think it's great. He's taking example from where we are, mentioning Sister Mary and Stephen. Yeah, uh, to inform you that we have, yes, many youths who are doing well, including yourself in Tanzania. And uh, if I told it was not this COVID-19, I know this, we have a programs in the Office of Justice and Peace where we built a network, strong network, and that network already exists. I'm the product of that network because uh, I was trained from this office uh, since a long time ago. And uh, uh, I know that in the future when the borders will be open, when it will be safe, we will also have this opportunity to, uh, to connect again and uh, build a new generation of uh, human uh, rights defenders, of Franciscan youth, of uh, whoever really want to carry this message of peace and justice. Don't worry, we are there. As long as you have this spirit, we shall connect and make it possible. Thank you. Uh, we still have some units, a few minutes to go. Oh, and uh, if you, there is one still having comment or remarks or remarks, welcome. Sister Mary also, I think she has an announcement. And then we give Brother Ben a uh, last remarks to close this and then we invite somebody to give us blessing and opening prayer sister do you have any any communication sister mary yes yes uh my dear brothers and sisters we have heard about the the fraternity which is challenging us to universal love. So my announcement is just to remind you uh, of our charity day. Uh, it was supposed to be today after this Zoom meeting, but the brothers and sisters have not yet contributed enough uh, to take to Mukuru. So we are reminding you that our doors are open. You can either buy or send money if you buy, you drop them in Ponchungula, our office, and uh, they will be received. We have moved it to 31st of October so that we give you enough time to, to prepare yourself, but we are grateful to FFM, FMM, Franciscan Missionary Sisters of Mary. Uh, they were number one to contribute and other individuals, we have received money from individual sisters. Uh, even one of our collaborators who is a Muslim. And we are requesting that we challenge ourselves behold Frateri Tuti, so that we go in good number to Mukuru. See what I'm sharing with you about the SPA, but also uh, give a smile to the venerable people in Mukuru. So thank you so much. Our offices are open. You can send, you can come, and you are most welcome. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. And before we do closing prayer, uh, I would like also to invite um, Sister uh, Euphrasia. Would you like to share something with us? Yes, please. Welcome. Thank you. So I wish to make a, just a recommendation or something on what Father Ben has just shared. I like this encyclical because it speaks about fraternity and social friendship. 
And especially it's coming to us as Franciscans in a very proper way and even in an elaborate manner, because we all know that in the same same encyclical, the Pope tells us that Francis was a saint of fraternal love, a saint of simplicity, a saint of joy. And therefore we are called and reminded to go beyond our limits as Franciscans and especially reach out to the poor, to those people who are marginalized, and especially to those who have no one to listen to them and no one to attend to them. We are also challenged on how we use our media platforms, especially when it comes to communication, because in the article number 42, 43, 46, 47, and towards 49 and 50, it is as if the world is consuming all of us, especially when it comes to communication, because we seem to be together, we seem to be a community or a society but we are not connected, we are delineated and we are separated from each other because of the social media and communication. And therefore the Pope tells us that if we continue with the same, same things we are doing, yes, we shall create silence, but we should also ensure that true wisdom surpasses or supposes the encounter with reality. How do we encounter with reality in our various social settings and in our community? Are we being swallowed up? Are we using it in the right direction or in the right manner? And the Pope ends his encyclicals, that is around number 287, by warning us that indeed, if we do not surrender totally to God, what's identifying ourselves with the poor, they abandoned and going from mile to help them. Then I don't know if we are Franciscans and if at all we are really following what our founder or maybe our spiritual father Saint Francis was doing. So actually, when you read this encyclical, I took a challenge to read all of it, and it really spoke to me, especially even the, the act of neglecting even the poor people within the society. And around article number seven, the Pope says when, when he was writing this encyclical, it happened that the COVID-19 pandemic came upon earth. And therefore, it really gave him enough materials that yes, the nations were there. Yes, people are there. Yes, we live in the communities, but we tend to be caring about the economy and neglecting the growth of a human person. Look at what our nations are doing. We are opening up, we are doing things to ensure that our economy is growing, our economy is being boosted. What about humanity? What about that poor person there who doesn't have anything to eat? What about that poor man who has nowhere to lay himself or maybe to lay his family? Is it a bother to us as we live as Franciscans? And I'm happy that the Franciscan family is thinking of visiting Mukuru. We shall go there and we shall see the spirit and what is on the ground. Does it speak to us, especially with regard to this encyclical that the Pope has given unto us? I'm really challenged as a Franciscan and when we look at things clearly, all these articles from article number one to article number 287, they seem to be touching us more as Franciscans. Only if we open up our eyes, listen to this message, digest it and let it speak to us, and then we shall realize that indeed, the Pope who has chosen our saint's name as his name is really communicating a lot to us as Franciscans and we need to act upon that. Thank you. This is nice one, sister. Thank you uh, so much. So uh, before, before we end this, uh, I would like to invite now uh, Father Ben, after all these comments, the remarks, whatever, uh, you can give us the final remarks, then uh, we will invite Father Haman also to give us, to greet the audience and they also tell us just something a bit, then he will give us final blessing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you for your reflections. Uh, 
so delighted with the the comments of Sister Euphrasia. What's her name? Euphrasia Euphemia. So, so. Uh, that analysis is very nice. Uh, we encourage indeed to read this document. After the Pope writes much about the environment and all the readings we have done around the uh, Laudato Sea, um, you know, he tries to balance by us now focusing more on the economy, on the plights of the people that live around us, uh, on, uh, you know, the neglected things. And even he cites uh, other people of other religion. For the first time, you know, the Pope is kind of inspired uh, by another religion, uh, the Muslims, to, to write something in the encyclical, which is a very unique thing. So as Father David said, I think it would be very good to come up with a super analysis of this encyclical. You know, we have many Franciscans who don't, I mean, don't like to read even the breviary in the church. So if you have a super short uh, summary to help many to read more and to be inspired more, uh, so that would be a very good thing. Um, I'd like just to speak a little bit about our new initiative and to inform you that uh, the Franciscans International have uh, uh, come up with a new uh, office of uh, Franciscan outreach, uh, knowing that the, the, the FI belongs to the Franciscans. So the idea is to encourage many more Franciscans to participate in the work of the, in the mission of the Franciscans International. And I'm humbled to inform you that I've been uh, elected to be the first uh, outreach officer for the Franciscans around the world. So you'll be seeing more of me reaching out to Franciscans, trying to get you at the UN uh, to participate in that process. Um, yes, that will be very important that you uh, you encourage to support the FI. And you, as you know, the, the FI belongs almost 100% on the contribution of the Franciscans around the world. So your contribution is very important, both material and by, by heart. Uh, you, all the Franciscan families are in, invited indeed to give their donation to the Franciscans International in order to promote the mission at the United Nations. The UN does not fund NGOs at the UN. The, UN, the NGOs fund themselves at the UN. So we encourage you to support, to submit your contribution in your different congregations. Uh, also, uh, we are working very closely with the Global Catholic Climate Movement, as you know, and I'd like to take this chance indeed to thank um, most of you who participated in the season of creation. We had so many activities. We have been able to train uh, Laudato Si animators over 6,500 around the world just within this period of time. So many more people are trained on Laudato Si. And as you saw in the season of creation, the Pope quoted directly the season of creation as something that is becoming a defining aspect in the liturgy of the church, uh, both the Catholic church and other, other denomination. So I'd like to thank you all for participating in that. And uh, we pray indeed as we come to the end of the year that we may be engaged in caring for Mother Earth. As you saw the IPCC report from the scientists, they said the September was the hottest month in the record, the history of all the you know documented history. So uh, these things are becoming worse and uh, we are encouraged indeed to take climate action and uh, you know climate justice. And finally, I'd like to say that we pray for peace in, the, in Africa, uh, especially as Uganda goes for the elections, Tanzania first. I think Tanzania is the end of this month and then Uganda early next year. We also, of course, praying for the US uh, that they may have peaceful elections. So again, thank you, God bless you and let us continue working together. You are invited to work with us, Franciscans International but also with the global Catholic climate movement in promoting climate justice, but justice as the Pope has mentioned in Fratelli Tutti and Laudato Si. God bless you. Pache Bene. Pache Bene, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations so much for this new appointment by FI. We are really looking forward to uh, engage more and be part of, of this. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to invite now Father Haman. Even though you joined later, you I know you are already aware of this message because you are, in fact, you are the one who invited all of us. So uh, tell us just uh, one word of wisdom and then uh, bless the, the participant. 
and we call it a day. Welcome. Yeah, it's really to say, Paul, that I'm, I've just come now since two, three minutes. I do not know exactly the content of today. Therefore, I would not, it should be a bit of also including our words to the Lord in our prayers. When I see now David, um, the Capuchin, come out, please, uh, may I give up to you to say the final words connected with prayers that you conclude with the conclusion of the content. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Father. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, all of us are uh, amazed with the kind uh, of good work that is being done by Franciscans all over the world. And I think um, it is a time that we work together. And especially uh, that St. Franc uh, Saint Franc uh, or Pope Francis has taken it to, um, to promote Franciscan spirituality to the whole church. The Francis there is no other time that Franciscans have become in the front line like now. Uh, especially with these two documents, uh, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti. I think um, we as Franciscans here in Kenya and especially in Africa, we also need uh, to show or even uh, to our voice be heard. And I think uh, as, as I had invited everybody, especially those who are able to write, uh, let us all come up with comments so that uh, as a Franciscan family, we can have a small document uh, of commentary. We can put even two, the, two, the two documents together. And I, I'm, I'm just thinking a title that uh, the two documents which are Franciscan. And then we give the comment of Raudato C. Of course, Raudato C has been commented quite a lot. I have also written a book on, uh, on, on it. Uh, now, probably we can uh, now put the two together and have a document that, uh, that from the Franciscan Family Association that comments on uh, the two documents. And then the whole world can be able to read what we in Kenya feel about these two documents. As I have said, there is Steve, if you have a good article which you want to, to come in the publication, write, send it to, to Steve, then uh, we can get some people to um, go through peer review, and uh, then we publish, we publish that book. Thank you so much, and God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. Your mighty God bless us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Father. Thank you. Do, we, do thank we know you. the talker already next Saturday? Who is the talker? Yes, James Katuko. Very good. Thank you. So, yeah. welcome you next Saturday.